Good morning, YouTube. That was a long video I posted not that long ago. <laughs> well, or, or maybe long ago. Um, I wonder if you guys are going to be stuck with that. I'm going to tell you how to get around that. But first, let's go to the intro, and then a word from our sponsor. What have you been up to? I've been riding on a date. I want to thank RV Mattress by Brooklyn Bedding for sponsoring this video. It's hard to believe that we're in the June. Man, it, it's just flying. But the thing that we're experiencing even in Northeast Ohio is some warmth. It's kind of warm. Now, you can see here, this was in Florida. One of the things that you experience inside an RV is it gets hot in the summer. Even with our travel trailer, we had two rooftop ACs, and they had to work a lot when we got into these hotter climates. But you don't want to get hot at night when you're sleeping. It's tough to sleep in a warm bed. So they have this gel infusion. Brooklyn Bedding's got some really good good combinations that allow uh, basically a personal touch to be applied to what you need. And they back it up with a 120 night sleep trial. So contact them, tell them what you're trying to do, what you're experiencing, and they'll get you dialed into a mattress, um, a high quality mattress. Once you find what you need, guess what? 10 year warranty. Now this, this is great. They offer free shipping and the warehousing, everything's out of Arizona. So you get everything relatively quick. Um, we actually had to go through a couple of mattresses because we picked the wrong one. We got one that was a little bit too warm. Uh, but the one that we got now, we love. It's it's exceptional. Um, we brought it into our home. It's a, a great mattress. They're a really good company. We're going to help you out, though. This company... Whenever you get your product, you're going to see here, it just comes all rolled up and you cut it open and it expands. But this company is offering a unique discount code that is in the description. This code is based on the link that you click it and then use our code daydream when you're checking out. You'll get 25% off, a quarter off. But again, you have to use the link in the description. And then at that point, you'll use the code daydream. Trust me, you're gonna love it. Now, stay cool and go back to the video. All right, so here's the deal. The settings on the player, your if you're on a computer or maybe even your phone too, um, there is going to be a gear, what looks like a gear. It looks like a cookie maybe or a, a, a fat snowflake or something. Uh, if you click on that, it's gonna say something about playback speed. Now, as long as you have a good connection, a fast connection, you won't lose any picture quality, meaning that I'll post this in 1080, 60 frames per second. That's what I post almost everything that we do. Uh, so you can click that gear and you can change the playback speed. I suggest trying 1.25. I think the, uh, with the amount that I talk and the speed that I talk, you should still be able to understand everything I say and without losing too much. Um, you can always pause it and go back if you think you missed something, but um, that's for all the people that are like, man, your videos are so long. Well, it used to be that with the internet speed that we had, a 30 to 40 minute video, let's just say a 40 minute video, took anywhere between 30 minutes if I had really good internet connection, uh, up to an hour to upload, depending on how much content was involved there. Um, that's not, that's that's I, we have fast internet now so let me uh let me show you what i'm looking at here and i'm going to ask you guys your opinion first of all i'm going to try to make this where i'm not ranting uh i i still have things that i'm going to complain about but overall i want you to be very positive about the day and what it may have in store for you <laughs> i'll talk about what our day has in store for us so you can see whenever we moved in um this went, we had old windows they were old um, this one had a, uh, a, a an awning on it, which helped with the morning sun coming in during the summer, but hurt all the other time, and it kind of made this room dark. Now, we have a really nice, cheap, what they call a fandelier, um, but it does a good job when we turn it on, lighting everything up. I mean, it, it does a really good job. We usually keep it off, obviously. And then we have an over the oven uh, also. And ignore the messy kitchen we just had a family get together for mother's day and all this stuff is cooking and uh i mean just a lot of stuff anyways getting back to what i was saying 
as I move the camera around, you're going to see that if, depending on which way I point it, the camera is going to adjust and change its lighting. So you can see all of a sudden that really dark floor, look how bright it looks. But if I go up here, now you can't even see the cabinet doors. So that's going to play a part with what I'm getting ready to say. But I just want you to get an overall sense that it's kind of dark in here. It's not as dark as what you see here. I mean, I can see these cabinets. It's, it's about... That's about the darkness that I see with my real eye. <laughs> Not my bionic fake eye, with my real eye. Not with the camera's uh, vision, but this is what it kind of looks like. But it is dark. It's darker in here. We wanted a lot of natural light for the kitchen. So when we had the windows redone in the back, it really made that back room bright. It didn't come through, though, because we had a solid door here. So you can see, look how nice and bright this is. It's very inviting. I mean, it looks nice, right? Well, we had to replace this door anyway, so we made sure we got one with a window. Not only that, but I wanted to make sure that I got one that we could open the window. So in case Heidi's cooking, we can open this window. We can open the porch windows. She can open this window, and we can have a breeze, uh, in addition to this fan blowing around. All right, here's where the problem lies. It, this is a dark corner. You're seeing it on the camera now as I'm seeing it. It's not horrible. Actually, it's slightly darker than that. It's, let's turn, I'm trying to get you into the light. That's about what it looks like right there in real life. So this area over here, see how dark it appears? That's what it looks like in real life. Now, I want to know what the door is called that has a whole bunch of panels in it uh, windows because or if they make a kit to, to put windows in a door that'd be even better yet when we replace the side door remember we had to replace every door on this joint outside door because they were all kicked in I told Heidi I want to make sure I have a window there so that we can get light we can get light it was a solid door look at all this light that's available We'll push that door open. Hopefully it stays there. But this door blocks all that light. Look at the way that it could look if we had a, a lit, you know, with panels. With a panel door with windows in it. Look how much light, look how much lighter it is. And overall, it just it just helps the room. Uh, I know I'm no, no fashionista. I'm not an architect. I'm not uh, an interior designer, but... I'm not, you know, feng shui. I'm, I'm just saying that I know that's something that is a positive thing, that we don't have this dark little corner. Tell me, though, do they make a kit that puts... Even This door's kind of crappy. You know what? T scrap, scrap that. We just need a door. What's it called? Is it... I mean, I know French doors. That's like two doors that usually have windows in it. Um, I, I, I'm not saying that. I'm just saying whatever... What do they call it? It's Maybe it's just a, a, a paneled window door. I'm coming in the basement because I want to show you something. This is, this is the extent of my rant. <laughs> I'm hoping not the rant. Uh, let me turn on this light real quick. I need to put... I, I, I'm, I'm, sometimes I wonder why I put off what I, what I need to do. You see the bikes that are down here? This is in addition to whatever's out in the garage, which we'll probably see here in a little bit. I, I probably have six in the garage, seven in the garage. Um, this is Heidi and I, more Heidi's favorite bike. She she likes this bike. She This bike, I can't keep up with this bike whenever she's on it, except when I had my really fast scooter. Um, that's the only time she... When we go over the causeway and go to the beach, uh, she would lose me. I, I would be in the, way behind. She'd be doing who knows how much, 40 miles an hour on this thing almost. Um, so I try, uh, this is all through negotiations and stuff. I was tasked to do a job uh, with the company uh, to get another bike. I asked them. For a specific bike 
And basically it was this one. This was called an Ingway Engine Pro upgrade. And they said, yeah, we can get you that. It's just called the Ingway Engine Pro now. I said, yeah, but is this the same bike? Yeah, it's the same bike. Um, this was th this bike we got then. It's supposed to be the same bike as this one. And as soon as I got it, I'm like, this, this don't look the same. There, there's some differences there. And unfortunately, there's a big difference. Both settings on these bikes are identical. I went through the controllers and I looked at every sub menu and everything. They're identical. I'm going to turn the bike on and I'm going to put it in sport mode and I'm going to put it on pedal assist 5 which means the strongest throttle also. Um, it, the battery's at 100% on the one that's supposed to be just like this one. Um, this one here is the old one. This one here is the new one. I'm going to turn this one on. Power it up, put it up, let it boot, go ahead and put it on sport mode 5. I'm just going to tilt this on the kickstand so the tire comes up off the back of, you know, on the ground. I want you to pay attention to the, the pitch, the sound of this rear motor when it's full speed. Again, this battery is 100%. It says 36 miles an hour on the, the, the screen. I don't care so much about that. That could be inaccurate. But listen to this one now. The whole bike, Heidi's old bike here, the whole thing jerks when I put the throttle to full. Ready? You gotta be able to hear that difference there. That, that tells me these bikes aren't the same. I need to take that new one out and put it in the garage and I need to put, uh, an, they make, uh, which they sent me, an external battery that you take off the rear rack and you put on the new rear rack that has a place for the battery to slide into and it gives you an extra you know, 20 miles so they say at full throttle. I got so much stuff going on. I think we need to rebuild these steps. These things are just, ugh, they're not good. Uh, the, the whole, this whole area is really bad. This is one of the worst areas of the house um these old everything's old the steps are bad there are no handrails this is all rough uh, this all needs repainted these all need redone the door they had the trim for the door to swing through this door needs replaced obviously with windows it's just it's not good if you had a choice And you knew that you were going to be moving in the future. And you have a slight storage need. <laughs> I think I'm making excuses for this. Uh, what do you guys think about uh, buying a small enclosed trailer? Um, not, not for camping. You know, I'm just talking about a small enclosed trailer. I'm talking about uh, like a cargo trailer. Um, Heidi and I discussed it a little bit and... There's a couple of them that's come up, and I've been kind of interested in them. Um, see, the problem is, is I've got to make sure that I have a truck then to pull it around. Well, I guess I could always borrow our uh, son-in-law's uh, EcoBoost Explorer thing that he has. It's a, it's like a big police vehicle. Um, I'm sure I could tow anything that I get with, it, like, you know, that size. But we were talking about how it'd be kind of nice to have because <clears throat> I could store a few things in the trailer. Um, we could use the trailer then if we decided we was going to go to, like I said, a flea market. Um, once all our stuff is sold, though, at the flea market, do we really need to have that trailer other than storing our stuff um, that we have 
I mean, I don't know. I don't necessarily know for sure, but it might be, it might be nice. It might be something to, to consider. And then if we do, which I told the realtor this, and it is 100% true. I told him, I said, at some point, other than if we have a health issue, at some point, you will be selling this house for us. Um, I just, we don't know when. I should say I. Heidi and I just don't know when. Um, Heidi and I, uh, Heidi and I agree with everything for the most part. Um about the way that we feel about moving. And, and the thing is, is, and I bet you guys are running through this too. There's a lot of you guys out there that watch us that are essentially the same age as us um, and are running into this same problem. I see you guys are slightly crooked. Let me, let me help you out there. Yeah, and that's uh, the, the whole idea is um, how... How do you determine what you want to do uh, before you get to retirement age? And Heidi and I's never want to, I'll, I'll try to, again, be transparent about this stuff. Um, Heidi and I's never considered that we want to retire. I, I, I don't see anything in our future that where there's going to come a day that we just go, all right, we're, we're just going to sit and watch TV and we're not going to work. I, it, it just it seems odd. I mean, even the, uh, the closest thing we came to that was when we were on the road the last three years. Uh, and obviously you see what happened. We, we like, yeah, you know, it's, it was kind of, it was, it was so, it was great on so many levels. And on the same, you know, on the other hand, it was, it was horrible. Um, it was kind of boring. You know, it, I, I don't know how to, to else to describe that. You'd have to experience it yourself. There's a lot of things I can't explain to you how you would feel about it unless you, ex, you know, experience it personally. Um, you know, the gas chamber. <laughs> In basic training, we went through the gas chamber. You know, there there's something to be said about experiencing that and knowing what that's like. Um, you know, just the first time you're on a plane, the acceleration, the feel of it all. You could kind of describe it to somebody, but they really need to experience it to know what it really is for them. And that's the way it was when we were full timing. It, it was, it was bittersweet. It was there were so many great things about it, and we enjoyed it because it was all new. Everything was new. Every place we went was new. I mean, that part of it was really cool. Heidi and I, I'll uh, again trying to be transparent about it, Heidi and I discussed it and we said that, you know, our favorite part of the whole thing was when we had our truck and our trailer and we were just traveling. Uh, and if we stopped someplace that we stopped for maybe three days at the most, and then we would travel, it, it, it was awesome. But the problem with that is obviously the amount of gas that you're spending. So for us to do that, we would have to actually start considering uh, getting a little bit smaller uh, in size with everything so that our tow vehicle might actually get a little bit better gas mileage. And also um, the, the fact that you're still going to be spending fuel, uh, but you can't spend money on the stays so much. I don't know if that makes sense to you, but I, I, I told uh, uh, the audience in the past that you either are staying in one spot and you're not spending any fuel. And if you have, like in our case, that thousand trails membership, um, you weren't, you could save money doing that. You would, let me rephrase that. You would be spending a lot less money doing that. Um, or, if you don't want to have, you know, the stays at the parks, or if you're paying for stays at the park, um, to stay away from that cost, you would have to be in your vehicle traveling. So um, that, you know, of course, this fuel, um, and there's more fuel involved all the way around. Uh, you're, you know, you're going to be powering your RV somehow, 
and uh, most likely it's going to be with a generator or if you're lucky enough solar if you have enough solar and if you're somewhere where there's a lot of sun um, so there's a trade-off there uh, of what you know where the money goes uh, the money's going to go <laughs> so when i say you could save money i'm just saying that you could you're going to be spending less money um, as long as you conquer your scenario and how you do it so uh, honey and i enjoyed that we enjoyed the traveling part of things but i think that uh overall that might have been a little bit more costly for us to do that i mean we were always filling the vehicle up we were always putting gas in it and again um when we stopped for the night uh luckily a lot of the places that we stopped at um you know had uh, uh, uh we were in an area that we could just boondock um but uh, there was times that we stayed in parks so uh, it's it looking back on all that it's it's kind of weird thinking about it I, I i guess we would have to do the hard math on it we would have to go back go through all our records and uh take in consideration how much money we had spent on the thousand trails membership which paid for itself easily paid for itself even with us wintering at a at a location that we were paying for um the time that we were on the road and all the other places we went to it's amazing how much those places cost to stay and how much we were saving um, by staying there um, or recovering from what we paid. You know, it's one of those things, you either pay now, you pay later. Um, I enjoyed I enjoyed that. Uh, Heidi enjoyed that also. So we're going to have to, we'll have to go back through our math and, and think about, and do math, I should say, and think about, um, how that money was spent while we were traveling and how much it cost. Cause, um, honestly, I don't, I don't know how much it cost us. Like when we were going all through out West, you know, up, I mean, we were traveling a lot. You guys know that's been watching us for a while. Yeah. It's, it's a, it's a tough thing to, to come up with. So we, we kind of are thinking about that, you know, what if we had a home base and then we would just take off and travel for a period of time. Um, I even told the realtor this, because uh, I know a lot of you guys are probably thinking, well, why don't you just keep the house? Listen, I would keep this house in a heartbeat until, like Heidi and I discussed on the video that we just posted, uh, time of shooting for us just a few days ago. But for you guys, it's now been who knows how long, uh, maybe, you know, three weeks or four weeks since we posted that video. Um, we discussed about, you know, how this could be a home base and we would stay, you know, keep the house until the day we die. We don't know what would happen to the neighborhood because of what I just said earlier about the the marketplace is driving uh, the prices of homes out of reach for the people that are in this area. Um, these people that, you know, again, I think the median median income uh, for this area is under 34000 I think it might be closer to $30,000. It's hard to buy a home um, on that, especially when the home prices are, you know, pretty high. Um, even for the, the really inexpensive homes, um, it's it's tough. Now, our realtor, I, I mentioned a city uh, that's not that far from us, and I said, yeah, I was thinking about, you know, this area here. And he says, forget it. He says, it's not going to happen. He says, I've got people that have got approved financing um, that have been approved for $215,000 homes or, or more. And he said that they are bidding up to, you know, $30,000, $40,000, $50,000 more than what the house is listing at because of the competition and it being in a nice area. And Heidi and I both have a hard time with that. I mean, we have a really hard time with the idea that somebody asks, you know, a certain dollar amount for the house and, and then, you know, it's a bidding war. Uh, Heidi and I is going to, we have full intentions of using that when we go to sell this home. Um, I'm definitely doing that. 
I, I mean, we're going to put a listing price and then we're going to basically take the highest bid because it, it, that's the way it is. And why should, you know, we got into this house and had to work, do all this work on this home because we were suffering trying to play that game of this bidding war out there. Well, I hate to say I'm not a one man crusade. Heidi's not a one man crusade, one woman crusade <laughs> that, uh, we're going to say, well, that's unfair, and we're going to do it the right way, and we're going to list the house, and we're going to sell it for that price, regardless. I, I no, I'm going to, I'm going to do the same thing because we had to take a hit uh, financially to do what we did here, um, because the houses that we were wanting to buy were just not available for the exact money that they were asking. It still blows my mind that we, uh, you know, found a home for, we found the most perfect home for $60,000, I think it was. And it was, it was, it was in a, a pretty decent neighborhood and, uh, it was in a, actually a really good neighborhood, but in a, a part of town that is a little bit rougher farther out, but it, there's a lot of fringes areas that are like that. Um, I find that, that this has been true forever, um, when we moved to West Akron, uh, whenever I was 13, um, I remember that our street and the street prior to ours and a couple other streets were really nice homes, nice people, nice neighborhoods. Everybody, you know, trick or treated. It was just a, but two more streets down, it was, you, nobody went down that street. No, you don't go down that street. Um, and I'm talking, you know, just a few blocks. These are two blocks away. So, that was back, you know, in the 80s, uh, so um, or late 70s, however you want to look at it. Um, but th it doesn't make it, you know, it's it's it hasn't changed. Um, so we found a house that we really liked, and it was like sixty thousand dollars. It was a uh, three bedroom, two bath. Um, it was uh, a, a small home on a city lot that was a corner lot. Um, it had a detached two-car garage, uh, just really decent home all the way around. I think the basement needed painted, um, but other than that, it was it was great. Um, and we bid like an extra five thousand dollars on top of what they were asking, and we were just told, you know, the realtor just said, hey. I was called by the lady that was selling it, and she said that they accepted another offer. I said, what's that mean? How much did they pay? And he goes, I don't know. They just said they accepted another offer. I'm like, oh my word, that's crazy. So anyways, that's what we're looking at. I just want you guys to have something to think about today. Hope that's what I did, stirred some stuff up in your head. Uh, but yeah, uh, we're, we're planning on working. Um, I don't think we're ever going to retire, actually retire, retire. Um, if we do, you guys will see us living in a shack somewhere. Um, I'm, when I say shack and don't take any offense to this, we would probably find a, a mobile home down South somewhere that is close to like, uh, the river. Um, and just someplace me and Heidi can just sit and, you know, fish, uh, Heidi can do some gardening and I can tinker around in the garage. Um, that's pretty much it. We don't want a lot of property that we have to take care of, but we want to be, you know, have enough property that we don't have to worry about the neighbor's you know, whatever may move in next to us. Um, and it should be pretty rural. We kind of, we're, again, we're kind of country folk. Um, so that's, that's it for now. Uh, we'll pick this up another time and, uh, hope you guys are enjoying your day because I'm going to try to do some work. I'll say work on the computer. Hmm. Maybe. <laughs> Two days later. Morning, YouTube. Another nice day in Ohio. I'm doing some work, uh, so my camera's kind of out of action right now. It's uh, doing some transfers of some other stuff that I was doing. Um, I'm trying to think, just ignore this mess over here and what we're getting ready to see in the uh, dining area. <laughs> I Oh, my, my shoes are in the back room here. I have to go out and get the trash cans. It's raining, so I'm going to have to dump them. But I wanted to say, hey, I'm getting ready to eat some leftover KFC, as you might be able to tell. 
Um, we are definitely into summer because we've had a couple days that um, are approaching what I would consider to be pretty decent summer days. Um, just in the middle 70s. We had our realtor came by. Uh, we had we had him stop by because we wanted him to check out the uh, the house. Uh, he hasn't seen it since we basically you know a couple days after we moved in. If you guys remember when our house was the disaster, uh, he helped uh, considerably <laughs> uh, straightening out um, and getting us a little bit closer to being able to move in. So. The reason that we're talking with him, which we'll go over that here, I suppose. Um, you can see it's rainy. The reason we're talking with him is we want to get an idea of what the house is going to be worth in the marketplace. Um, he's saying that all houses in this area uh, are pretty up there right now. Um, the market's pretty good for a seller. Uh, he said that he has had a couple of people that have had cash you know, $200,000 cash, and they've had to bid up quite a bit uh, above and beyond what um, they were asking for the house. Um, so that bidding war thing is still going on. So we're kind of caught in a, a catch-22. Um, you know, we're, we're just experimenting right now uh, with potentially selling our home. However, um, if the marketplace really pushes the idea of selling the home, um, then it might be a wise investment to do so. But now we're stuck with another situation, and that is, where do we go? Because it's kind of like the whole RV thing. Remember, whenever the RV shortages really kicked in, uh, there was a lot of people that were like, holy cow, my RV's worth much more than what I paid for it. But uh, when they sell it, what were they going to do? Because then at that point, they had to buy another RV and pay that you know, premium rate that they were going for. So Heidi and I have been kicking around the idea. Um, she's still on the, and I'm kind of on board with her. I, I should say kind of. I'm, I'm largely on board with her about the whole idea of, well, if we move, why would we just move down the street you know uh that's an exaggeration but why would we go you know to a different part of the city or a, a, another city that's relatively close you know because we're already settled here um you know we're already established here and i agree i mean i, I definitely agree with her on that um but there is some pluses to uh you know maybe getting out when the getting's good <laughs> Uh, we could potentially put all our stuff in storage and uh, we can move into a condo, um, you know, and just stay in a condo for maybe a year, sign a year's contract. Um, it, it's, it's hard to say. These are all just spitball ideas that I'm throwing out there. Uh, however, uh, yeah, he came by, he had to take a look at, you know, what we've done, uh, you know, since the last time he saw the place. I'm going to go ahead and step out in the rain here, get those cans. It was, um, you know, destroyed. There was just stuff everywhere. Remember the, the yard, the way that it looked? And as we look at the destroyed fence, we're, we're working on that. It's, we've, got, we've got some people that are going to do it, I'm pretty sure. But we've, we're still messing around with the insurance a little bit. Um, but he hasn't seen it, you know, with all new doors. You know, last time he was here, all the doors had been kicked in. Uh, they were just busted shells, um, all new windows, uh, all new basement windows, all the carpet, the place being cleaned up, automatic garage door opener actually working, uh, all this extra security stuff that we have, um, the lawn being taken care of relatively well. God, it doesn't look that way. I should just shut my mouth about that. It needs edged again. But typical Ohio weather you guys are missing out on one thing you have no idea unless you have them in your yard how good it smells right here well even on our porch like when our son comes in off the porch and he walks through the living room you can just smell these lilacs it's so strong 
you could just clip a couple of these off and put them in your house in a little vase and I mean the smell is incredible guess it's an option to mow over there I'm not sure what's going on he's really good about that stuff yeah I might have to dump this out but yeah we're uh, contemplating um, selling and moving and again we don't know what that may look like so we have to we have to be prepared and that's what we told the uh, the realtor uh, said to listen all we want to know is how you know how much is the place worth how how uh, much money uh, should we be asking a cigarette but how much should we be asking for the uh, the house and I told him I said you could tell me that the house is only worth you know, forty thousand dollars, and I'll believe you. I mean, I really trust this guy. I also told him that I was hoping it was more than that. <laughs> so glad I set that lock on a delay. All these locks, usually when you shut the door, um, Alexa, lock back door. Um, Hang on. Sorry, guys, I probably made your cameras all jack up for your automation at home the jack up, but. We had it set up to where on the front door, the back door, and the side door, when you close them, they locked. We put this on a 10 minute delay, which is really nice. And again, if you guys haven't seen this, it's our dishwasher. People get a kick out of this. We, we showed this before and um, they were like, wow, that's awesome. <laughs> but yeah, we didn't really have, I mean, we had the room kind of over here for the dishwasher, uh, but you know, there's no plumbing. So we would have to roll it over, hook it up to the sink, and we wanted a sprayer, and we didn't want to tie up our sink necessarily. So um, that's the solution. We've got our, we need to get all these, cat. what we're doing is getting the cabinets either refaced or repainted or whatever. Uh, that's something we want to do. Plus, we're talking about getting some sort of maybe sliding doors for these cabinets or for this under stove storage and then this needs also a door of some kind uh, put on it so we got more work to do and then of course painting all this to make it look nice the, you know cabinet wise and I still need to work on let me get a drink of tea here ah I still need to take the the cabinets and lower them back the way they are you can see the tile is cut out for the cabinet here and here and over here also this I have to finish out I have to put some tiles back and I need to trim it out I need to put some I, I, I'll tell you what I'd like to have is uh, of for this to be wood um, you know like just a, a, a trim like this you know trimmed out but I'd also like to have something that would we could hang here or just have here and we can lift it and slide it in there. That way if we need like something from upstairs, we could just slide in that slot and have somebody upstairs throw it down through the laundry chute and it would land on it. But that's, uh, that's me getting too elaborate for my own good, tell you the truth. Heidi's at work and we are contemplating heading out to... Uh, one of the local flea markets because we have accumulated a bunch of stuff that we don't necessarily need and that's what this disaster is over the winter uh, Heidi and I had the bright idea of let's buy product and sell it on eBay just for something to do you know in winter time I'm not shooting a lot of video you guys know that so I'm kind of stuck in the house Heidi, when she'd get home from work, she's kind of bored. She doesn't, you know, she don't have any projects she can do herself. So we started picking up items, you know, that are really good deals, you know, new with tags, um, just stuff that we've come across that seem to be obviously really good deals. And they are for the most part, um, you know, new in the box items, even though that box doesn't look the greatest. And that's what all this is. Real nice dress shoes. I mean, I've got some kind of high-end dress shoes here. I don't even know what these are. I don't think they would fit. Well, I love the way they look, though. They're beautiful. 
Um, stuff like that. Oh, and pocket knives? Holy cow. Look at all this. All these little pocket knives and things. I mean, these are really nice. The, all this stuff. This is the Leatherman. Here's another Leatherman. Here's another Leatherman. <laughs> and then these other pocket knives that... Oh, here's a little Leatherman. <laughs> Um, but yeah, some of these little pocket knives, they're, I mean, they're really nice. They're, they're cool. Anyways, we picked up quite a bit of this stuff. I can't remember. This is a fossil or this is a worn out wallet, but it's, it's a brand. Oh, it's coach. It's a coach wallet. It, it, just little stuff, little stuff like that. And stuff that we ran into that, uh, was, we should give this to Herbie. Herbie, I, I should I should send this to you. I know you're a Star Trek guy. Yeah. Well, maybe. We'll, we'll see if we can figure out a way to do that. Um, and dog. <laughs> Here's a, a little uh, dog safety vest with a handle on it. I think I have another one. That's for, like, floating. You know, dogs that are swimming. I think I have another one somewhere. But, oh, and then this picnic time basket... These, oh, these are really cool. These kids' cowboy boots. Look at these things. They're really cool. I mean, they, they've been worn, but they're, they are like vintage. I think they were made in Mexico. I'm pretty sure they're made in Mexico. Yeah, these are made in Mexico. But how cool is that? They're in pretty good shape. So we picked up odds and ends of stuff, and we thought we're going to sell it uh, online and I don't know. Something happened to the point where we're like, no, that's that did, that's not going to happen. Hand warmer, some sort of digital hand warmer. This is real nice. This is a, a guess. This is a vintage '80s guess jacket. Anyways, oh, and then all this stuff. Look at all these games we got here. <laughs> we got a whole bunch of games. Um, our grandson, every time he comes over, he wants to play it. Um, but multiples. So that didn't happen. And you can see we already got all our packaging for it, all the mailing for it. Uh, all these boxes were for whatever we may sell. And I don't think it's going to happen. We sold a few things on eBay. It worked out just fine. It's just a hassle. You know, by the time you take out the fees and everything, I don't think it's a good good deal i got crap that i'm gonna sell here uh some solar stuff our tuner i need to get our tuner i need to get the information for it i mean it's a ford five-star tuner it's really cool um it definitely works but yeah lots of stuff hello youtube welcome to rv daydream what you doing i left these windows open last night because i thought i might be out here to do a little peaky sneaky Shooty, me cutie. So yeah. Heidi's with us today. I'm coming outside because it's so nice. I want it's to not raining. Yeah, it's not raining. So was it's just like one of the first days that it hasn't rained. Oh, yesterday it didn't <clears throat> rain. Oh yeah, yesterday it yeah. didn't. But I went out to pass the the fence and it's just flooded out there on the other side. Of, well, even on this side of the fence. I mean, we had some rain, but our ground here just holds holds it. It just holds it in. So, there was a dog back here. There was? Mm -hmm. uh, pit bull, huh. I'm guessing. Was it black? No, it was light colored. Oh. He was all over the yard. Oh. Well. So I was looking at the cameras and I'm like, it said pet. And I'm like, mmm. Usually when it says pet, it's raccoon. <laughs> we don't have no pet. <laughs> yeah, it's usually a raccoon or a cat. But yeah, he's all over the <clears throat> So this is just um, a quick what you doing update. Heidi's off today. Uh, I don't know if you guys see the sky. Uh, is there a cloud? No. It's yeah. Beautiful today. Yeah, we don't get very many of these. Although <laughs> yesterday was like this. Yeah. Um, of course, I worked. Yeah, Heidi worked. So what are we doing today? Um, I'm going to Heidi and I. We're going to put the bikes, a couple of the bikes, in the back of the truck because this is one of the things when we do these reviews that sometimes they ask for some crazy stuff and uh, like in this case they want us to give them 50 shots of each bike and they want it to be in 
different scenery uh, so that they can utilize it on their web page and this is the kind of stuff that a lot of people don't see whenever they go oh it's awesome you get all that stuff for free well I mean I would rather just sit on a Sunday with Heidi on the front porch talking about how nice the weather is than having to load up the bikes in the back of the truck drive to some trailhead and um, you know get pictures but uh, the thing that I found here uh, is we don't have any good scenery unless you drive out of the town. I mean, there. I guess I shouldn't say that if you go downtown, like to the courthouse area yeah. and down to that park. Right. But We don't want to ride our bikes down there. No, because we have to go through an area that's a little bit on the rough this side. probably wouldn't be, once we get out on Niles Road, probably wouldn't be terrible. Yeah. But it, the road is kind of busy. Yeah, yeah. I'm not... And it's not. this is not a bikeable city. Yeah, and the bikes that we're getting ready to go do a shoot on are not ones that are necessarily meant for uh, urban commute uh, on on roads that are above 35 miles an hour, you know, in four lanes. So, uh, yeah, these are more back road bikes, urban commute city bikes with bike lanes, that kind of thing, and sidewalks everywhere. That's the other thing here that I don't really care for. No sidewalks. Sidewalk? Only downtown. No, we get, uh, the sidewalks just stop well, sometimes. Yeah, the sidewalks in some of the neighborhoods, but like getting to the next No, city, even like when we go out to... There's no sidewalks over here. Yeah, there's sidewalks all the way up till oh. the parts store. Oh, right. Yeah, then it, yeah, they just disappear. Yeah. It's, it's crazy. <clears throat> so that's what we're doing, and we thought we'd take you along. Uh, we'll show you part of the, the little trail that we're going to go on. It's not that far from the house. We could... If we had if we wanted to we could ride the bikes down there yeah i don't know yeah, that is pretty nice. i don't remember the range of the bikes or anything so it'll be fun we'll have to pay attention to that but yeah heidi's off so um we haven't been to this park yet either so no and it's not really a park it's just a bike trail right so let's go see it so here we are city of niles and it's downtown niles now the only thing that I really know that Niles is famous for is they had a tornado that came through here in 85 and it was wicked, really bad. Oh, there's a workout center over there. That's cool. So anyways, here's the trailhead. We're going to go check this out and uh, yeah, get some shots. We were constantly stopping and breaking the video up, taking pictures along the way. So now enjoy the return ride uninterrupted. Commander. Gotta be part of it.
Yeah, it has to be part of the meander. It's got to be part of it. <coughs> no, I'm saying the other one on the right hand side. <coughs> Damn it. Damn cough. I got a tickle on my throat. Okay. things. Anything coming your way? Very good. Yeah, this is where we would get on that if we were at that house. Cassette clicks a lot more than mine, Hyde. Yours clicks a lot more than mine. I don't know why that is. It's can you tell? It's like um, what was that other bike we had? Did the same thing. It was real loud. I remember it's real loud. Here, listen to mine. Here, you gotta get. Listen to mine clicking compared to yours. Can you hear it? You can hear it? No, it's a click. It's the pedal click. The, mine don't do that. Listen, keep on pedaling yours and listen to mine one. Well, I guess it does. I can hear it here more. Maybe it's because of the way it's positioned. Jump for bumps. Oh yeah. My bro, those roots. That's a nice trail. You have to move the Niles. Only enjoy it during the summer. The thing is, is it would have to, we'd have to find something on way up down there that would be worth driving to. Yeah. Which again, it goes to Canfield, so. Don't have mirrors, that seems weird.
to be run over. Oh, 23 maybe, 24, 25, 25, yeah. Now we gotta go up a hill. Walnut Street. says Walnut Street. And this one, I didn't read. Damn it, missed the sign. wonder what's up with these houses.
it's nice and shady here. Should have a bench here. I figure I have to zoom in on a couple and crop a couple and it'll come out to more than what we do up there. So what about the bike trail? Very nice. Yeah, it is spiced. It, oh, by the way, guys, that will be for everybody that says, oh, I don't see anybody riding these bikes, what they're like. Um, the seat's not comfortable enough for us, but other than that, they're pretty darn good and they're really inexpensive. So, yeah, all right, get, a, get, get myself a bigger seat. <laughs> yeah, we're we're going to um, load these things up in the truck and head on back. So I just got done mowing the lawn uh, in the back, um, and man, I don't know if you can tell. I'll try to zoom in, but I'm on a stable setting on my phone so it's a little bit harder to zoom in as far as i normally could look at that summer storms yeah we've been into 80 degrees uh, pretty much every day um for the last three days i guess it's been and they said that storms could be potentially uh, coming so the deal was is um on the other side of our fence is there's a lot of standing water uh, that goes on when it rains. And it just got dry enough that I could get the zero turn through it um, as long as I didn't stop in it. Um, I mean, it's muddy. It's There's a lot of mud in places. But uh, I mowed the other day, and a couple times I had to go through puddles. And it did okay. But I left a lot because we had to let the grass grow so long because it just stayed wet back there so long. So I had a lot of dry grass, uh, dead grass, that I wanted to knock out before this new storm came through. So I waited till the last moment. I, I waited till we got all of the dry weather that we could and all the sunshine that we could. And then I went ahead and went back there this morning. I mean, it's only... Uh, Oh, I don't know. 11, what time is it? The time is 11.17 a.m. All right, so it's not even noon. But, boy, this storm came out of nowhere. Yeah. It's nice, though. I mean, I don't mind a, a good summer storm. But, boy, the wind. Whew. Look at that. Nice. As long as these... Well, these are the storms that put out... Um, some of the uh, tornadoes out west. I'm waiting for this big tree to go, tell you the truth. Yeah, I mean, this tree is just so massive. I, I don't think that we have anything to worry about necessarily. But wow, is it massive. We got a couple of uh, window air conditioners because... The upstairs, we have to run our two and a half ton AC unit um, at a real low setting and then shut off all the vents in the first floor, you know, our living area, for the upstairs to cool uh, or stay cool. And when I say when I say cool, I mean keep it around 75, 76 degrees. We can't get it much cooler than that, unless it's in the evening. But during the day in the summer, you know, with the sun beating down, especially on the south facing room, there's just no way. Um, ooh, nice. We, we just can't do it. We can't, unfortunately, um, do anything there. So they make these little ones, uh, these little air conditioners that are considered many uh, split AC units that uh, go in the window and they install just like window air conditioners uh, like the old ones but a little bit better um, so anyways 
I, uh, I, I put a couple of them because they're very, 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 very efficient. Uh, I put a couple of them, one in uh, Heidi and I's room and one in our son's room. And um, that's what I was doing yesterday after I edged the entire driveway, which I did that because I knew rain was coming and I wanted to have a path for the water to travel. And it looks like it's doing a pretty good job. Um, of course, the driveway is going to be flooded to a certain extent right now. But once that, you know, the rain lets up, the water has a place to go off of the driveway and uh, a low spot to travel. I, I still need to do a lot more work, but that took a lot. That's all clay out there. It's like trying to carve Play-Doh with a butter knife. It was our grandson's last day of school. Look at all the pollen on our AC unit. Of course I cleaned it off. Good morning, YouTube. Actually, uh, a few minutes shy of noon. How about that? <laughs> I'm going to try you out with another camera today, a different camera, because I've got some shooting that I have to do. And... I've got um, uh, to charge the, the battery on the other camera I, and the, 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 the monitor. I don't know why that just beeped because I literally, before I started the camera, pushed mute. Oh, oh I turned off Bluetooth instead. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> oh, man, I'll tell you. So, uh, it's a beautiful day out. Uh, let me turn you around and let's see what we can cover here. Um, kind of some good news on the home front here um what that really means we don't know we'll talk about that in a second here but uh let me show you what's going on let me open this a little bit we have all our windows open that should give you a clue it's beautiful out it's another 80 degree day and i have this to contend with today um i can't wait this is going to be a good one uh, a few of you that uh, watch our reviews for review reasons um, not just watching our channel because you guys want to see what we're doing. Um, have been asking for this one, so we got it, which is awesome. Oh man, I got to mow the yard again today. Hey, I, I know this doesn't look like much on camera, but you guys know that I'm pretty, I stay up on this stuff pretty well. You can see that edge job that I showed you earlier in the video here a little better. It worked out. We had that hard rain and... Yeah, that worked out fine. Heidi is working a close shift today, meaning she's closing. And this is messy. Man, what a disaster. I was going to string trim all this today. I still may do so. I don't know. Heidi has got her bucket brigade. I don't know what's in there. Squash. I don't know. Plants. She's planting something. Um, we'll see how that works. And she's got something planted out there, too. I wonder if those sprouts are coming up at all. I should look at that. So I knocked out the yard the other day right before the rain came, which I think I talked about on video. No, nothing sprouting is. Oh yeah, there's something sprouting here. Look right there. I don't know what's in there. I don't know. I did this to cover up that water meter. I still have a couple raccoons that come out here all the time. See, this is why I wanted to make this nice and level. So if they wanted to put a planter out here, you know, it'd be kind of cool, right? Well, so we've got uh, yet another estimate on our roof. Uh, the guy came out. Uh, he's an Amish guy. Um, he got a ride out here and he crawled all over the roof. He measured a bunch of stuff, and we should hear uh, what that's going to cost us uh, from him. He's going to give us two estimates, one for shingles, 
and then one for um, a metal roof. He He's pretty well convinced to go with a metal roof. Now, the only thing the roof needs, let me just put it this way. The only thing the roof needs to be correct is these shingles repaired on this roof here. We got a guy that said he would do it for $400. He would repair all the shingles that are bad. All right. We still have to get the fence straightened out, you know, fixed, corrected, whatever. Here's the thing. This is this is the cool thing. Let me let me set you guys down. We'll talk about it that way. So, just out of curiosity, um, because we were investing so much in the house uh, since we purchased it, we wanted to find out what the house was kind of going for in the market. Um, you know, we moved into the house and it was in such a state of repair that, uh, you know, it needed a lot of work. And you guys that have been watching us for the last year know what we've done in the last year. And, and it's quite a bit. So we were concerned, you know, now that we are getting to the point where the roof, the only thing, again, that's absolutely necessary is the repairs on the shingles that are above the garage here. However, um, what we actually need to do, um, you know, actually the right thing to do, let's say that, is replace the roof. So we got the house um, to give you a rundown of the big expenditures on the home. Uh, we got the house relatively inexpensive. We, at, and when I say relatively inexpensive, I mean bargain bottom pricing. Um, I'll disclose that whenever we got it, we paid, uh, our contract was set up with the previous owner for $25,000. So basically, uh, we got it for $25,000. Now, there were some other fees that were involved there, but that's, that's what we paid for. That's the contract fee. And we bought it off market. So you should get an idea of how much, how bad the house was if we got it at that price. So the windows were around $10,000. I think it almost uh, $10,500 for all the windows. Uh, and I'm not talking about the basement windows. I'm talking about the, the home windows. Exceptional windows. They, they have some sort of energy rating. Um, Flawless. The, the guy, it was just perfect, that whole process. Um, we also got all new basement windows, which there are one, two, three, four, five, six. I think there's six. Let me think here. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, there, there's got to be six of them on the house. Uh, that was, I think, $1,300. Um, they're very inexpensive in this area, and the company that does them, or everybody just says, you know, like all the the guys that did our windows um, and two other estimates for windows said, yeah, we don't even do basement windows because these other guys are, you know, they've got the market cornered, and they are the cheapest and the fastest and the best, and they are. Um, let's see. The other big expenditure, pretty big. Um, we had the uh, central air, you know, replaced. We put in a two and a half ton central air unit, um, brand, you know, obviously brand new. Uh, that was uh, thirty five hundred dollars, and that's also with uh, we had to have all our cold air returns duct work redone in the basement because the guy had stole all the metal that lived here before uh, before he moved out. He scrapped it all for money. Um, I don't remember the price. It wasn't that much. I think we were at the $1,300 mark. We had all new downspouts and gutters installed on the home. Um, the other big ex expenditure we had in the house, I think we were at about $2,000 uh, total uh, with everything. And 
maybe, I'm sorry, let's add a little bit more to that. I think it was closer to $3,000 for the kitchen because uh, we had to get a, 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 a refrigerator, uh, a new oven, wall oven. Uh, we bought a microwave because we didn't have one. Um, and uh, a new stove top. And we also bought a new sink with a built-in dishwasher. And we paid a gentleman to come out and tear out all of our countertop and put up new countertop with backsplash behind the oven and uh, do some cabinet work also, just some slight finish work to make it a little bit more finished. We're still not done in there. It needs painted. Uh, let's see. We also then which these are appliances I don't know if they're going to stay or go with us it all depends on you know when we move where we move to our whole situation at that point um, but we have a uh, we paid four thousand dollars for our washer and dryer and pedestals which they're it's very very nice we really like them and then one of the most painful things that we did um, for the, the home um, was $5,500, I think it was, for the carpet all throughout the house, which was a complete disaster. Go back and check out that video that I talk about the carpet installers and all the problems that I have there. Actually, it was over a couple of videos, but I condensed it into one rant video <laughs> you'll find it just go back it's within the last year uh, the other thing that we did for the property uh, when we first moved in was a heavy investment on just getting it cleaned up we had a 30 yard dumpster that was here the first day we took ownership uh, that got picked up once we filled it up and then they brought in a 20 yard dumpster and we filled that up uh, after that we um, had trees removed from the property uh, in the back uh, which we ended up doing a lot of the work ourselves to get, clean up the brush we had a lot of concrete block and rocks that were here that needed to be taken away um, which we paid a guy to do that not not a hundred percent take everything but took quite a bit we had to have our front steps tore out and new steps built I think we have probably um, well the tree removal and all the block removal I think we were right around a thousand dollars for that plus some some debris that was on the other side of the fence um, that probably put it up to about thirteen hundred dollars there so yeah that was about thirteen hundred dollars but when we had the new front steps uh, done on the home uh, I think we were into about $800 for that. And then we had to get another dumpster, uh, a roll-off, uh, and uh, it put even more concrete and the leftover steps uh, in that. Um, so with all that cleanup that was involved um, with those steps, even though the steps were, like, I, now I think about it, I, I believe they were closer to, eight hundred nine hundred dollars and then our cleanup put it over to where we were at probably you know a, a thousand maybe eleven hundred dollars for that let me think you know there was other things uh the garage door opener smart garage door opener um that was i think in the three hundred or four hundred dollar range um i did the install on that so nobody nobody had to you have to pay for that. But, I mean, there's lots of little things that I, I mean, you just, some of the stuff you just can't add up uh, off the top of your head. You know, it, it, it doesn't come to me right away. But we've gotten to home where it's pretty livable. Um, and Heidi and I is very comfortable inside. Now, there's still things that need to be done. Uh, like we started repainting the basement. Uh, we pressure washered the entire, <laughs> took the pressure washer to the whole basement. Um, and... We need to paint it. Uh, we want to paint it. We will paint it. Uh, that, that's something that will definitely happen. Um, we need to do something with the downstairs bathroom to make it 
you know, I'm talking in the basement to make it more usable. Um, it's nice, but it's, it's just open. It's like if you go to the basement, you know, there I could be potentially with a shower curtain, obviously in the shower stall, taking a shower. I don't know how much that would, yeah, it's, it's just too open and same with the, the, the bathroom. There is no, uh, you know, there's a toilet and there used to be a door. Um, and then, you know, now it's just, there's nothing, it's just framing and there, you know, the sink, the bathroom sink, and there's a, a bathtub downstairs. That's all open. That's all opened up. There's no walls. There's no real floor to speak of the, you know, it's just concrete. It's nice concrete. It's just concrete around the toilet. They have some tiling, but it's, it's kind of broken up. It needs redone. Um, it, it's just raw. There's, you know, it's studded ceilings. So we've got to do some work down there to make that a little bit nicer. And then, uh, by far, no doubt about it, top of the list uh, as far as inside the house, our third floor, our main bathroom, the only real bathroom the house is supposed to have uh, that it was built with back in 1933. Um, that bathroom has been remodeled over the years uh, once or twice, and it needs completely redone inside. It is just, it's the, the sink and the cabinet's old, uh, all the tile on the wall is old. The bathtub has been redone a few times. It's old. Um, the the toilet is old. The the structure in which the toilet is installed, it's like a little cove. <laughs> I can barely fit in there. Uh, I talked about that in a previous video. That all needs redone. So th we need a complete bathroom remodel upstairs to the point where they actually have to take down some wall structure. Uh, because of that little cove area that I talked about. It's just outdated and it's not functional now. Um, or it is functional. I mean, Heidi uses it, our son uses it, and I use it, uh, you know, in the middle of the night uh, just so I don't have to come downstairs. Uh, but we do have a half bath downstairs. Uh, we did install blinds on every single window in the home um, except for our back porch. Uh, which we have, you know, window treatments for that of some kind. Heidi has some sort of blackout curtains, I believe. Uh, we may put those up over the summer because it is getting kind of warm in there. Um, we did add a lot of home automation that probably would end up staying with the home. Well, especially all the door locks. All of our, oh, that was the other big expenditure. Ah, glad I talked about that. Every exterior door has been replaced. Um, so we have the back door going uh, into the porch and then we have the porch going into the kitchen that's another exterior door those two doors have been replaced the side door has been replaced and the front door has been replaced now the front door has a new storm door also uh, the side door needs a new storm door I don't know so much about the back door it kind of looks okay without it uh, we we will discuss that at some point in time because we were talking about redoing the steps and making sort of a deck area. Again, you can see where we kind of snowball and, you know, we're talking about these modifications and these updates to the home. And you hear the amount of money that we're talking about. Uh, and, and we just want to make sure we're not spending too much. Uh, going back to the home automation on the door, uh, all the exterior doors that are to the outside. Um, so the back porch door, the side door, and the front door, we have uh, remote wireless uh, keypads and, and, and keys, you know, the, where you can hit it and it just unlocks. Uh, we also have a security system throughout the whole house. Um, we did not replace this back door on the garage. However, this has a, a special deadbolt system on it uh, that has a plate that you almost have to cave in the door to get in to the garage. So there's a deadbolt and a regular knob and every door has that on it, on the house, has that special plate that you can't really break the door frame. You, I mean, you'd really have to collapse the door to, to bust it in. Um, every one of our doors that lead to the outside, I mean, the real outside, I'm sorry, even the porch door, I forgot about that, that one does too. Every one of those doors um, has um, that deadbolt system on it. And we have one key. You know, obviously we have many keys, but they're only one cut. 
and it fits every single door lock. So I have one key that I have on my keychain that opens both locks on this door, both locks on the porch door, both locks on the porch to the kitchen door, uh, side door and front door. So that's all correct. We've changed a lot of the lighting in the in the home. Uh, we have got a got a bite on my leg the other day. It started itching. Um, we have uh, a lot of automatic lighting, but we did change all the lighting, uh, you know, the globes and stuff like new front porch lighting, stuff like that. Again, so many little small things that I, I really couldn't even go over uh, and, and cover all. So where's all this going to? We're 20 minutes into this, and where does this all go to? Well, we, we had our realtor come out, and we didn't know what we had, you know, what the house would be worth at this point in time. You know, we see houses in the area, but you can't, you know, only a realtor, they have so many tools that they can plug in um, the approximate house age, uh, the location within 0.8 miles of this location, um, homes that have been sold, uh, homes that are on the market, uh, homes that he told us that the, the way those tools work is sometimes they look at a house that, let's say they have a brand new concrete poured driveway, but they have a real small yard. Whereas we have a big yard and our concrete driveway needs leveling and it's got cracks in it. Um, or they have all new siding on the home and a new roof, but they have old windows, old wooden sash windows and no carpet inside. Whereas we have all new windows and all new carpet inside, but we have an older roof and we have the original brick facade, you know, the brick, I should say facade, it's a brick home, the brick, you know, facing of the home. It's, it's just a different build, but you can see where I'm saying that you're not going to find a house that's necessarily identical to ours, but they have a way of playing this plus $2,000 minus $2,000 plus $4,000 minus $4,000 based on basically amenities and uh, features of the home. And based on the current trend over the last year and the homes that have sold in the area and a few of them that are still on the market, um, I want everybody to put in the comments now what they think, you know, pause the video here, and what they think uh, the house appraised for. We're in a, in a depressed area. Um, it's um, northeast Ohio. We're in the Warren area of Ohio. It's where actually our address is Warren. Um, that has a big play on market, you know, location, location, location. Uh, but uh, just to give you a heads up, the, uh, the, the homes in the area are increasing in value. But this area is not, uh, you know, Vero Beach. This isn't Tampa. This isn't Clearwater. This isn't uh, Jacksonville. This isn't Myrtle Beach. This isn't uh, Savannah, Georgia. Uh, this isn't um, Knoxville, Tennessee. Uh, this isn't one of those locations that, you know, the housing market dictates that a house of this size should go for, you know, $250,000. If I pick this home up and the garage and the property and we place this in Vero Beach um, or let's say in the Melbourne area, Palm Bay area, um, this is uh, a $350,000 home um, just because of what it is, you know, a uh, three bedroom, two and a half bath, uh, brick craftsman home because it's, it's got all the built-in cabinets and stuff inside there, built-in bay windows, uh, you know, with drawers underneath and built-in corner china cabinets and in the bathroom upstairs is a bit built in linen storage with drawers. Um, it's a very, very nice home, beautiful brickwork uh, on the, you know, the, the actual work. I say the facing, even though I pressure wash the brick, I think it needs cleaned on a professional level. I, there's a couple areas that need, you know, it needs to be cleaned, but beautiful front porch. I mean, the, the house is very nice and a big full basement and a yard. We have five city lots. We have three up front here, and then we have two that go all the way to the next street. We own to the next block over, basically the next street over. Um, so it, it's a it's a big property. Uh, our land, or the landlady, 
a realtor said that um, it's uh, up just about a half an acre, and I didn't realize it was that big. So now that you put the uh, dollar amount, uh, we'll go ahead and reveal. Um, our current market value on the home is $135,000. Uh, we don't have that much in it, so that works for us. Um, of course, we're going to be here for a while. Heidi and I have talked about it based on this. We, we, we need to go through with the roof. It's the right thing to do. It's just the right thing to do. Um, we don't have to, though. It's at $135,000. That's what it's worth right now with the shingles being replaced at $400 on the garage. Um, but it's just the right thing to do. And that's also not fixing the fence. Of course, that's the right thing to do. Um, so anyways, that's what we, the news that we got. I got to get this bike in here. And I've talked to you guys long enough about this craziness. I got so much to do. Look at this mess. All right, let me get to work. I hope you guys are doing well, though. Uh, Heidi and I is doing well. Uh, I, I just had to say hi. We've got, uh, a, you know, a lot of positive vibes that have been going on um, with, uh, you know, the stuff that's happening with us and the, our house. Uh, we've got a few things that are going on. Hey, you guys, tell me what car, what what is a really good... Uh, from your own personal experience, um, what is a really good lease vehicle that you guys have had on a car? Um, our, our lease is going to be up on our Kia here in November. And Heidi, I has been, you know, we've been talking about it. We've, we've been talking about maybe getting into uh, a different vehicle. And I'm stomping my feet because there's a little chipmunk flying through here. Um, we, we've been talking about, you know, getting it either maybe purchasing the car that we have. It only has 12,000 miles on it. <laughs> we leased it for two years, and I knew we wasn't going to put very many miles on it. It's only got 12,000 miles. So we talked about buying it because it does the job, gets good gas mileage. We've gone on trips from Florida, Ohio, Ohio back to Florida, and then from Florida back to Ohio again. Um, it's, it's a good car. It gets good gas mileage. It's nice to drive. Um, but, you know, Heidi might want something different. We, we don't know. So I'm asking you guys, what do you guys think? Now, we also have to, this is in the mix also, we also have to get another, I got to get another truck. I got to get something that's heavier duty, um, something that's got air conditioning, something that is a crew cab, potentially something that is four-wheel drive. Um, and we are looking for an RV, obviously. Uh, there's a couple of them. Actually, I could go right now today and go there's two rvs i could go buy um one of them is a single axle 18 foot uh that is a 2018 and i think they're asking 5900 dollars for it it is a very nice little rv you heard the word that i said though little it was very little um heidi and i is not full timing you know at this point we're not snowbirding at this point um that would be something that we could use just to get around uh, but there's another one that's a 19 footer. Um, that one could be potentially a little bit longer term. That one is even cheaper. It's only $2,800. I mean, I almost picked it up just to flip it. Tell you the truth. It doesn't look like it needs very much, but before we get into another project, we want to make sure it's something that we like and makes sense to us. And I just don't see it right at this time. Well, I got most of, uh, well, all of the lawn mode. I went ahead and hit the weed trimmer there. I decided not to do my review today. Um, instead, I took care of the lawn. It's coming around. I'll tell you the hardest thing is, is <laughs> kind of a pun, I guess. The ground is hard. Um, it's soft back there, but it's this clay. This stuff is just unbelievable. And the thing is, is there's no water penetration at all. It just stands on top. Especially in, you know, on the other side of the fence in our, I guess you'd call our back backyard. But it's, it's just real hard, all of this. Uh, I mean, I could, uh, well, actually I did. Let's go over here. You could see where I took the string trimmer. And I, I was trying to see if it was a stump. Because I couldn't remember if it was a stump that I had to avoid with the mower. Or if it was something else that I could, you know, not worry about. And I took the string trimmer, and you can see, look at this. 
I did that with a string trimmer. It's just hard. This is all just packed in hard. I gotta clean this up quite a bit. But it's a shame because whenever the the you know you get to this time of year, the uh, yard starts looking nice. You know, if, whenever you get enough rain, and this is one of the reasons that some of you said, "Have you looked out?" You know, moving to New Mexico. Um, you know, it's just so brown out there. You know, how much water would I have to waste trying to keep it green? Um, I like the uh, I like lush grass and of course the only way you get that is with a lot of water and unfortunately you know we have a lot of rain but you know it's nice it's it makes the yard look nice it just makes you want to enjoy it more however for us to make this yard correct I would have to get um, some sort of a, a tiller you know, uh, uh, a yard tiller, uh, some kind of a, a, a tractor device um, that would go behind and just tear up the entire yard. You know, basically cultivate the whole yard and then smooth it all out. Maybe mix in some sand, uh, you know, have a load of sand come in here, uh, some topsoil, mix it all up, make it to where the, the ground is more you know, able to take water in and, um, you know, disperse it. I would have to put some dry wells in uh, to where, you know, there'd be a, a basin drain, sort of, but there's no basin to speak of for the water to, to go into. But that's, that's, you know, way above what we want to do with the house. <laughs> um, it'd just be nice to have a yard like that. Our last yard wasn't perfect, but all right, I'm done out here today. I have not eaten yet today, and it is currently 3 o'clock. So I need to get inside and get something to eat and uh, cool off. And, uh, man, is this garage a disaster. It is not good. Not good at all. But, again, at least we got the, uh, the yard taken care of today. And it is a beautiful day. Like I said, these skies, you know, with this white fluffy clouds and a, a breeze it's 80 degrees outside it's just a really nice day we don't see a lot of these here but when we do get them it makes it awful awful nice talk to you guys another time all right guys so we're doing a little bit of night snooping out here i know you guys uh probably can't see very much we're going to see if we can correct that a little bit with some light but i need to um get my boots on because we've been trying to catch these raccoons out here for i don't know how long i don't think there's any spiders in there but i am in my sleep clothes <laughs> and i looked out in the cage uh that we set out we set out a couple traps and Unfortunately, we have um, a possum that has been captured, and we don't want to hurt possums. Possums, first of all, hardly ever harbor rabies, and even though they looked horrible, they actually are um, very much a clean rodent, or uh, whatever that may be. Um, I'm not sure if that's a rodent but it's a clean animal. So I gotta go to the garage and get some gloves because I caught one and unfortunately, it's, it looks like it's a baby and the mother's over there freaking out. Um, I got a headlamp also. There we go. Let's go ahead and get that headlamp lit up. And I need to get a glove. Maybe two gloves. Yeah. So I feel kind of bad because that's not what I wanted to capture. I'm trying to maybe release it. 
let's see if it plays possum you know you always hear that yeah I set out two traps and we were hoping to capture yeah that's the mama and I was hoping to capture the raccoon and this is the baby or I don't know what it is tell you the truth but we'll see if we get it out of here get get out dumb Hopefully it leaves out of here. Go. Look. It's open. I don't understand why animals are this way. They... There. Go. Look. Go. Get. Go, go, go. All over some peanut butter. Get. Oh, you... This is going to ruin my chances of catching the raccoon. And I can't really set the trap up not to fall. I don't think. Oh, I could have. Oh, well. Okay, let me just poke it out of the way. Let's see if we can give it a little poke. Go ahead. Get, get. Go, go, go. There you go. There you go. I don't know, maybe it was traumatic. <laughs> Wonder why this thing don't move. There we go. All right, so we still have a cage set over here. Let's see if anything ate the peanut butter that was over here. Nope, okay, so we've got that. I don't know what happened to the peanut butter cup that I set up in there. Oh, it's underneath the, the trap door. Got a little bugs flying around here because I had storms. I don't know if you guys can see any of this. But, all right, we'll just let that go. All right. Maybe tomorrow we'll pick it up uh, and catch a raccoon. <laughs>